Nearly there. You read the text message in the eerie glow of candlelight. Your entire house had been plunged into darkness by an area-wide blackout. You wanted to sleep, but total darkness had a funny way of playing tricks on you. You could hear sounds you normally wouldn't, like the drip of a tap, the tick of a clock, or the creak of a door somewhere else in the house. Honestly, you were tired, but knowing there was nowhere to turn the lights on unnerved you, keeping you awake. You weren't the biggest fan of the dark. It always made your imagination run wild. You squeaked anxiously when you heard a knock at the door, but ran to get it when you realised it was not a monster, a murderer, or a mugger. Opening the door, you all but fell into the arms of Fumikage Tokoyami, who was ready to catch you. Hold me, you said dramatically before nuzzling your nose into his neck in greeting. He wrapped his arms around you, humming approvingly. I never thought you, of all people, would be afraid of the dark. You caught the hint of amusement in his voice. You kissed the feathers on his jawline, feeling your anxieties melting away. Just because I like you doesn't mean I have to like the darkness too. As you let go of Fumikage to invite him inside, a second voice muttered, We're a package deal. You giggled, spotting Dark Shadow's eyes peering out at you from Fumikage's back when you let him ahead of you then closed the front door. You're not the darkness, or we wouldn't get on, you mused. Fumikage hummed approvingly again. He had enough trouble dealing with his quirk as it was, but Dark Shadow liked you, and always played dice when Fumikage was around you, even in the dark. Walking back into your bedroom, Fumikage paused. He saw every available surface occupied by a lit candle, and had to smile. You were such an oddball. Are you having a seance? He asked drolly. Your excessive collection of candles was embarrassing, now that he had seen it. But without any power, it was your only method of warding away the dark. I'll blow them out since you're here, you said bashfully already turning your attention to the ones closest to your door. Fumikage blew out a couple closest to him, before Dark Shadow reared its head. Tiny tea lights had no effect on its power, no matter how many dozens you had, so with the giant swoop of its shadowy arm, it extinguished the candles all at once. Fumikage reached out, slipping his hand into yours to guide you back to the bed. Dark Shadow cackled happily at its win over the world of light. Once the two of you were nestled under your duvet, and Dark Shadow had disappeared within Fumikage, he wrapped his arms loosely around you, stroking your hair to ease you to sleep. You loved this side of him, the gentleness that many forgot existed in Dark Shadow's presence. Fumikage leaned forward pressing the tip of his beak against your forehead affectionately. Darkness is but a memory when the sun rises. Rest well until then. You smiled, snuggling into him, and closed your eyes. Nights were a lot easier whenever Fumikage stayed with you. He never needed much of an explanation, and never ridiculed you for things like this. Breathing a deep, comfortable sigh, he muttered. Freaking out over a blackout must seem pretty silly, but thank you for coming over. Not at all, he reassured you, combing his fingers through your hair in a soothing manner. Everyone has their own strife. He eased you closer to him, letting your chests bump. He was so warm. You felt yourself relaxing into him listening to his deep voice as he comforted you. It's fortunate that your strife is easily countered. Dark Shadow is the king of blackouts. With him around, there's nothing else to fear. Nothing else would dare come for you in the night. 
He had such an eloquent way of speaking, like someone from a gothic horror. You sighed contentedly, noticing the way Fumikage deflected all the credit onto his quirk. You wondered if he realised just how much he was helping. You weren't wrapped in dark shadows embrace, forgetting the creepy noises your house made. You were in his. It was in his arms that you felt safe. It was his voice that lulled you to sleep with poetic speech and a tone so deep it brought butterflies to your stomach. It was he who never trivialised your problems or made you feel bad for reaching out for help. Fumikage smiled, hearing your shift in breathing as you fell asleep beside him. He gently nuzzled your hair with his beak, wishing you sweet dreams. A while passed, and Fumikage stayed still, holding you as you slept. Slowly, quietly, dark shadows slipped into the room, watching over the two of you like a doting parent. I've, I've got, got her, her back, it murmured, promising that nothing would ever befall you if it had anything to say about it. Fumikage nodded, stroking your hair once you were in a deep enough sleep not to let it wake you. She has nothing to fear at night, he replied softly taking in your peaceful expression with his dark, adjusted eyes. Not when we are here.